Good morning all. Welcome back to another part of the Apocalypse vlog. Excuse the sunglasses, but you can probably tell it is super bright out here. Um, and I need to be able to see and not be squinting the whole time. This on the table oh, <laughs> is the KK Moon knife sharpening system. I don't know if you're into knives, into sharpening. Um, my kitchen knives are quite old now. They're at least six years old. They've never really, really been sharpened properly. I've got one of those little drag along sharpener things that I've used for quite a while. And it's okay, it puts a sort of edge on it. I don't really cut anything too tough, but I just thought with other knives that I've got, I'd like to be able to sharpen them properly. So I invested in this, shall we say. This was the cheapest one I could possibly find. Now I bought this a year ago, over a year ago actually, off Amazon, 25 quid. Um, and this comes with sharpening stones on it, which is these, different grits. They come in this nice big pack here. There's different grades from, I think it's 180, 240, 800, 1000, something like that anyway. The only problem is they're not diamond. They are just sharpening stones. So they, they wear away quite quickly, let's put it that way. Right, so this is quite a simple thing. It's, fl it's flat pack, you know, like these, these legs bend down, that kind of thing, so it suckers on the back for a bit of grip. There are conflicting opinions on how to use these things. I've got the blade clamped because uh, otherwise you have to hold this and this and this. Some say this is a but this is a backstop and you should slide that down and push the knife against it and hold the knife against the white bit. No. This knife, I mean I'm gonna take it out of here anyway, so I'll show you this is what some that people suggest you should do. So keep your knife level with the edge and then butt that up to the back. So now as long as this doesn't move and this doesn't move, I can hold this and work my way across. But if anything slips like that moves, I can't hold them both, which is why I then clamp the blade instead. So then that's held in one position. I can still hold this, but then this holds the jig in place as well. Let me, I mean, I've done a couple of just practice ones on here just to show you, just so that I knew it was set up right. Um, we all know the knife test, the sharpness test, is paper. Paper doesn't prove necessarily that your knife is sharp. It proves you've got a nice clean edge as well. So most things will cut paper, won't they? Paper's easy to cut, but it's whether or not it drags. So if I try and cut this, you can probably you can probably hear it as well. It's cutting through. This isn't a sharp knife by any means, but it's dragging, dragging really badly. And that's not a very clean cut. You can't see this on here, but there's very, very fine edges, just like little feathers and hairs coming off of it. So the idea with the grits of these is that you start at a low number which is a very coarse grit and what we want to do first up is essentially we're going to reprofile the blade this doesn't really have an edge to it it'll cut most you know soft things it'll chop a pizza <laughs> uh, it struggles with cutting meat red meat essentially uh, red meat is a coarser uh, what's it called i'm going to say thread count it's got a coarser thread count i thought it's more fibrous there you go it's more fibrous so it does struggle with that and has to be chopped, it has to be sharpened pretty much every single time. Now, I chop on a hard surface like this because it stays cleaner. I don't like wooden ones and I don't like plastic ones. They get gouges in them and then they get full of contaminants and then they're hard to clean out. And I just don't like it. It just doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't feel as hygienic. Chopping on a hard surface like this though, dulls your blade quite quickly, rounds the edge off, unless you've got hardened steel, which these aren't and most kitchen knives aren't. So anyway, without further ado, so the first time, so these are spring loaded, sorry. So you pull this forward, watch you don't cut your fingers off, so you pull this one back, and that frees up your plate. You can get diamond versions of these, and if you're gonna spend the money, like the Lansky system, it probably will be a better bet. And then just pull the spring loaded end back, drop it into its groove, and that's it done, that's in. It's recommended, these are wet stones, it's just to wet them slightly. It's very hard to understand the instructions on these things because they are in Chinglish. But the idea of the water is to pull the particulate matter that comes off your blade away. And all you do is start at one end and run your essentially sand file across it. I'll bring you in for some more close ups in a minute. They say sections. But in all honesty, do what you're comfortable with. Once you've done a few passes on that, move along the blade, keeping hold of the knife and keeping hold of the state, the, 
the mounting block and start again. So the idea to reprofile the blade is that especially when you're cutting on hard surfaces is that it rounds over. So you want a V shape, but as you cut on hard surfaces that V becomes that. You can't then sharpen that, you have to then bring down these sides here to make that V again. So that's essentially what we're doing, we're taking the edges off of that. I personally have very little experience sharpening knives. Some years ago, five, six years ago, I, fa I made my first knife. It was the zombie chopper slash woodcutter, which I might link to down below. I probably won't, but I might do. I might save that for the next video. I'm going to make another one of those. I'm just I'm going to make a knife though, rather than a zombie chopper. So that's that side done. We're now going to pop this over. And we're going to try the other side. Now, I am predominantly a righty. So I'm going to try and do it with my left. So I'm going to keep my finger on the block again, out of the way of the sharpener. Start at the end. So that's pass one done of the 80. Let's try and clean some of this off. Now I can already see a uniform-ish line from about here to pretty much the end now on this side. The sun's a wonderful thing. And this side I've pretty much got all the way from the back to the front. So my natural right-handed stroke was a lot better than my left-handed one. With no dragging on the finger there, that is not sharp in the slightest. So now we're going to switch over. So that was our AD. They all come wrapped up in here. We've got a 400, a 1500, an 800. We'll go for the 400 next. We could probably do a bit more on the uh, on the 80. Sorry, on the 180. That's not an 80 at all, is it? The problem with them is they write the number on the face that you grind off. Right back onto the right hand. So we're now going to hold this thing in place. So the difference is, these are getting more fine now. The 180 is a res relatively coarse grit. And it will give you a cutting edge. It won't however give you a refined edge. Whoa. That's why you've got to be careful. You'll be able to do it. I can actually see the edge coming up on this now, which is quite nice. Come on, finger out the way. And you'll start to notice when you're getting sharper, you should feel, you should be able to feel across the edge a burr forming. So let me bring that over to you so you can see how much metal is actually shifting. Can you see that build up there? That's not the stone, because the stone's red. Right. We are, as they say, cooking on gas. It's actually really starting to... That profile's come along really nicely. So what you tend to find as well is if you're chopping hard things, is you're going to get little nicks out of the edge of the blade and you're going to get little pits and then when you pull something like a piece of, across a piece of paper or a piece of meat or something it will tear rather than cut okay, win. well that's already 
markedly sharper because I don't have to put any pressure into that, just the weight of the knife sharpened that or pulled that across. Move on to the 800 now, which is even finer still. Oh, hello. Did we get one? So what you'll get is, as you take those burrs off the edge, is you will get a very, very fine, fine piece of metal, which is running the seam of the edge. It looks like a hair, essentially, and one just popped off there. So, oh, that is cleaning that up so nice. You can essentially achieve the same thing with a block of wood and some sandpaper. Ain't nobody got time for that. Hold off to the side, the light will catch it. So that's 800. And that is 400. You can actually see the grind lines in that. That one, they're getting down to microscopic levels. And this is 1500 grit, 1500. This should make, visually, this should make a noticeable difference to the edge of the blade. This one, because it's so fine, it skates around all over the place. A little bit of resistance on that end. That's probably because the, the blade is flexing, and where it's flexing, it dips down and changes the angle. So what we might do is this, which is probably in the instructions, but I gave up on them because it's in English. Oh, it's looking beautiful. We have got a burr on the edge, which is we need to take off. Can you see all of the crap on the table? Some of that's metal. A lot of that is stone. Right, let's clean this up. Now you can see all of the bits that aren't yellow, these are from the previous knife sharpeners. And I actually sharpened this on an angle grinder a couple of times as well. But this damage is from the previous knife sharpeners. And you can see where they, how high they come up on the blade. Which isn't what we want. We want our sharpening across the edge. Well, we could reprofile this all the way back up to this um, plunge line, not cross there, but we're not going to, not at the minute. Right, it does feel noticeably sharper. Much more fine and clean cut that is. All the way to the end, pretty much. The end could definitely do with some work. Next step in the sharpening process is to hone the blade. Really take that burr off the edge, clean it up nicely so there's no dragging of anything. This is a strop, double sided, rough side, smooth side. This is a stropping compound or a cutting compound and all we do is apply it to the strop. Now you can get lots of different compounds or different products to do this job. You can get this stuff which is basic compound, basic stropping compound. You can get uh, impregnated stuff it's got different compounds or different elements impregnated into it and you can get diamond ones even in the form of a spray so you don't need the compound on you just give it a spray with a diamond spray and then give it a run over with your strop start off on your rough side and all you're going to do is run your strop run your blade backwards across your strop so start at one end and what that will do is that will pull that burr this way Pull it the other way. I've never done this before, so I don't know how many passes this takes. It's nice and clean. Flip it over to the smooth side and do the same again. That. It's looking grand. Remember when you're wiping a knife off, don't hold it that way. Unless you know what you're doing. And this has probably got a better edge on it now than when I bought it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh man, I'm well impressed with that. What can I say? KK Moon, you have done a grand job on a budget scale. 
this for twenty four ninety nine and this for ten ninety nine, which came double sided strop plus three blocks of cutting comp of compound as well, and that's going to last years anyway, unless it goes off. Uh, the packaging you get a microfiber cloth. It's a full roll rep for this. The value is outstanding. I've tried many things, like I say, angle grinder, uh, different uh, kitchen sharpener things. I had one of those ones that you put down, it's got the ceramic edges and you drag it across. That was terrible, absolutely terrible piece of crap that was. I've got another handheld one, which I'm actually, I'll go get in a minute and show you that one. And that was okay-ish, but that's phenomenal. I mean, I've been looking for something to sharpen my mora. Uh, I've got a mora, stainless steel mora. I don't know if these are up to sharpening stainless steel, but we can give it a go at some point anyway. But I have to say, this is a top-notch product for that money. Right, let me go grab the other one. This is my most used, or was my most used knife. You can see where I slipped with the angle grinder and took that off. That's not a particularly clean edge. It's not a bad edge. I think I've done quite a good job there, but you can see the damage that occurs where it's misshapen. That's mostly been sharpened using this stuff. So what I used to do with this is hold it, put it into the sharpener. Pull it across, let's see if this has actually got an edge on it at all. That's not going to sharpen anything. Looks clean on the edge, but it's not going to sharpen anything. And I used to pull it through, like that. Pull it through a few times. And it does put an edge on, as you can see. Then I thought about it, I thought, why don't I do it this way? And put it on the table. Because then you can push down onto it. And you can hear straight away the difference and feel how much more metal that moves. If you've got one of those, do it that way, don't hold it. But it puts a dirty, dirty edge on it, so that's the next one that's going to get sharpened anyway. But we'll probably do that inside in the kitchen on the next video. Same as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Smell you later.